Do we have music? Is that working? Or is it just not a thing right now? Because there's supposed to be music. Oh, there's music. Okay. That's better. <laughs> you know, you get to... I'm, I'm glad I get to be the guinea pig as well, because I feel like I haven't put my face on enough stuff now that will reflect poorly on me. Only reflect poorly on Pop Gun. Hey Falco, hey everyone, what's going on gamers? <sighs> Can you hear the music? Or is that, is it, it's gone now? How is it, how are levels? I can't test anything. <laughs> Did I bring it to their home? Yeah, crazy. Just, I started driving a couple nights ago and I just like knocked on every door in the city until I found them. Hey, I'm gonna make that joke later, JPEG. You can't do it. <laughs> That's on my list of jokes. <laughs> ah, dang. Where's my... How are we doing? 10 minutes until we go here? I think this will be like a battle against a clock, but instead of it like trying to condense it down, I'm trying to stretch. So I'll just talk really slowly. That's my game plan. <laughs> yeah, it all went up here. Hey, can someone um, make my tweet pop off now, please? I did tweet that I'm going live, right? Like, I, that did... Yeah, I did. Okay. Cool. The brush cast. Is this, like... I was trying to, like, replicate the whole popgun water thing. Is this... Other side. Is this, like, adequate? It feels pretty large, so... I'd like your tweet if I could hear you. How's this? Is that better? Is this, is this better? <laughs> it's like, um, it's, it is large. It's like the largest mason jar we could find. It's difficult, but I just have issues drinking from all containers. So a massive mason jar is not too different for me. Yeah, I don't have any. I was looking through like all of my stuff for anything that resembled like a novelty sporting cup. I just, how do you have issues? I just always spill. Like I, I refuse to use straws. I don't know why, I just do. And then I just spill liquids on me when I'm drinking. I've got a lot of coffee stains on a lot of my clothing. It's really bad. Do I need Discord up during the podcast? Oh, I should go in the podcast VC though, just so I look cool, right? Bang. There we go. <laughs> I think you'll just have to wait and see if I do the intro or not. <sighs> oh, who is that? <laughs> So I want a little jump into VC there. How are levels? Can you hear music? Can you hear me? Music only sometimes. Ah. Uh, okay, this should be constant music now. I had to uh, get rid of my, like, I, in my microphone audio chain, I normally have like a second preamp and I had to get rid of it because it crapped out the other day. On air, actually, it crapped out during a live stream. It was really fun. <sighs> you know what? I actually, I'm not feeling this overlay anymore. We're just gonna, that feels better. I like this more. Yeah, this is good.
the logo did end up staying in the bottom, Doma. It's pop brush. You know, I, I had a very brief stint as Pop Gun Jr. Uh, last year, probably about this time last year, and I feel like I've been replaced now, you know? Like, my time was up. If anyone's curious, we're listening to the um, Mario Kart DS original soundtrack. Um, I don't know what Popka normally has on, but this is these are the bangers. <laughs> Ugh. I feel like every time I put down this mason jar, my desk shakes. It's probably getting picked up by my mic. One thing I um I think I'm I'm realizing is that I think I would do much better with a second host. I think talking alone is gonna be very difficult. I feel like if I had someone to bounce off of, we'd do well. I used to have like hour long conversations with um Narco from uh, when he was on DLT, just like talking about like, what if we redid the divs and we'd talk about it for an hour and then we'd be like. I wonder if Pop Gun agrees with us. And then we'd go with the Popcast and four weeks later he would he would say exactly what we were saying, coincidentally. He needs a coke I do need a coke commentator. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to the idiots in chat, Toma, but we haven't started yet. And it's not like I don't wanna I don't want this to be like a just chatting stream where I just like go back and forth. Like that feels strange. <laughs> it's a podcast. This will be on Spotify. I don't think I don't think you realize, it's going to be on Spotify. I got you. Just, just get Narco. I could. Is there a game currently selected? Do I need to do that? Is Splatoon what it's normally set to for this stuff? That is something PC. Oh, Popkin changed his Twitter bio to say dad. That's so cute. What song? This is not in Mario Kart DS. This is DK Pass. Oh, we're hitting. We're about to hit the real banger right before I have to transition off. There it is.
because there's music and it goes so hard. <laughs> I can't, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can. I'll explain what commentary is on the podcast today. We can make a segment out of that. <laughs> ah, music! We're good. I clicked the back button. Okay, what say you we do this thing? Okay. <clears throat> Here goes. We'll see how this how this pans out over the next hour. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the podcast. Whenever you're listening to this, whether it be live or a VOD, Twitch or YouTube, or Spotify. Ugh. Weather. You're stalling for time commentating so Cali by watching a looping Among Us gif. Whether you're trying to figure out who the hell this kid with hair is on Popgun's Twitch channel, or debating if it's safe for a newborn baby to play Splatoon, whatever it is you're doing right now, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to this. Unless I don't. I'm not Popgun. I feel like this is established, like it should be known, but I need to- I feel the need to introduce myself. I'm Brushstrokes. Um, I uh, am the head tournament organizer with Popgun for Low Inc. Um, and uh, I have worn a whole bunch of hats in the Splatoon world over the last three years. I joined in June of 2020. Um, and we'll talk all about kind of my background and how we got there. Oh, I need to turn the topics on because one of our topics is how to become the head tor tournament organizer of Low Inc. and rule the world. Um, I'm not the first guest host. I think JPEG has done this. Um, and so, oh, so far only head TOs of Low Inc. have hosted the podcast. Uh, though I think over the course of this month, you will see some other new faces. Um, so, all of that and more. But um, first, uh, news of tournaments that may be in of interest to the casual uh, listener, if I could get through those words. Um, there are two brand new low-level tournaments coming up this week. There's a low-level event from the Cephal Cephalopod Cooperative. It's Thursday, August 10th. It's called Coral Clash Low Tide. Um, so there's that one, and then there's a draft tournament. Uh, not your typical launch point draft cup. No, this is a draft tournament by low-level pickup Splatoon. That one's Friday, August 4th. Um, so... Two new low-level events. Uh, MIT will be putting on Minnow Cup Clamblitz Edition Saturday. So if you really wanted, you could do a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, three for three there combo. Uh, and um, so that's all for low-level, I think, coming up this week. You can find those on BattleFi. Uh, but also, uh, coming up this weekend, there's a Mug of War going down. There's a Proving Grounds. I think there's going to be some good commentators on that one. I don't, I don't know. Uh, and also this weekend is the Splatoon World Cup uh, Western Qualifiers. They're doing um, a different kind of format to get into it. I think they invited some teams, and uh, now they're also doing uh, qualifiers. Um, so that's going on. 
um, August 5th. Uh, I think it's streamed by Prochara, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Little Squid League is also playing with a ladder format, though it is an open uh, qualifier. I believe it's the 6th, uh, though it could be. Uh, that's the Sunday, I believe, but I might be wrong. Uh, regardless, it is open play. I know I saw like Red Sun signed up, so it's going to be a wide array of teams playing in that. Um, but definitely something to try out. They're going to want you to play in that because it's going to define how Little Squid League runs in the future. And that is a very important tournament to the low-level Splatoon community and Splatoon as a whole because of it overall. Um, so there you go. Those are some tournaments going on here. Um, speaking of ladders with uh, Little Squid League, um, I know a topic that's been, that's been going around lately has been um, sort of what does Low Ink do if we hit 257 teams? That was something that Popgun talked about, I think, in the Low Ink recap, which was last Monday. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but um, one thing that was floated was ladder, uh, and Little Squid League is um, facing their own issues. I think they do, so, they do groups, and they've had had so many groups and the burden for seeding that and verifying that for TOs can really be a pain. So I get it. Uh, I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, first, um, I want to talk a little bit about me and talk a little bit about how I got to sitting in this chair um, and hosting the podcast. Um, but um, so I've worn a lot of hats. I said that. Um, I uh, have played uh, the roles of production staff as an overlay designer and animator. I've also worked on video trailers for um, a bunch of different orgs. Um, I've been a commentator. I've been an, uh, an analyst. I have been a podcast host. Um, um, and of course, I'm also a tournament organizer, uh, head TO for Low Inc. Um, but my story starts as a player, and I promise this will all make sense, and I will make this about how to become a head tournament organizer and rule the world. Um, but I started uh, as a player for the Wiggly Phantoms um, in June of 2020, and I was on that team for nine months until, or sorry, on that team until June of 2021. Uh, it took us nine months to get out of Little Squid League. Uh, we went, we played Low Week every single month, uh, in that time, we went two and four, seven of those nine times, and made a bracket once, got eliminated, second round of losers bracket in the lowest uh, bracket at the time, which was Gamma. Um, so I've suffered in the trenches of Little Squid League and Low Ink. I feel it, I get it. Um, but we win Low Ink, or sorry, we win uh, Little Squid League number 10. Uh, Jub kind of uh, reaches out and is like, hey, what if I helped? make this tournament look really awesome on twitch.tv and now the tournament looks really awesome on twitch.tv and i reached out and i said hey what if i helped make this tournament sound awesome on twitch.tv so that was my first commentary gig uh, and after a year with wiggly phantoms and then a year with my own team bad luck trout uh june 2021 to about june 2022 um i uh had a brief stint on red sun and ultimately when splatoon 3 came out in august uh, took a step back and decided to focus on other things, such as commentating. Uh, I casted Little Squid League twice until I got my until I got an invite to the Inkling Performance Labs um, production server to cast there, uh, and I got really lucky because Popgun heard me on LSL uh, my first and second time ever commentating and said this kid uh, is going places, um, and uh, I was able to reach out to him and use him as a resource for help. Um, and at the time, Proving Grounds, which was then Testing Grounds, was being used as a tournament for some testing, like new commentary pairs and stream production stuff. Um, and so a baby new commentator was, um, you know, able to get thrown on the mic and thrown in the deep end and cast on IPL. Uh, and because I was in that server, it meant when an emergency commentator was needed for King of the Castle, I casted with Dura. Like my fourth ever gig on air. Um, so like that was my foot into the door there. Um, on the production side, um, there was an open call for uh, Tassel, 
uh, season three, which then became Tassel All Stars. Um, and I met Ink Fairer, who's the stream producer for Low Ink and the head of stream production for IPL. Uh, and I basically begged them to let me design things for Inkling Performance Labs. Uh, and by August 2021, um, I was working on Super Jump 1 as well as a bunch of projects that you know, may know as SQSS and um, other things that I can't remember. But basically, it's SAC, everything that has passed through Low Ink or passed through IPL since Super Jump 1, um, I've worked on on that side, basically. Um, and because I was in meetings with all hands for stuff like Super Jump uh, as overlays animator, working with Ink Fair and The Moo. Um, I was able to sit in on uh, meetings um, uh, talking about tournament organization, and it meant that um, I was able to reach out to uh, IPL staff at the end of Splatoon 2 and said, hey, what would it take to, to sit in and help staff this event? And over the past year now, um, that has grown into a head TO position as JPEG decided to take a step back. So why do I mention all of this? Um, it's because kind of climbing the ladder in the Splatoon world uh, mirrors that of the real world. Um, and I, I, I mean like it's about knowing the right people and being in the right place at the right time um, and kind of getting lucky. <laughs> and um, that could be better. Uh, I remember when I was first starting off, I wished I could have gotten my foot in the door a lot sooner, a lot different ways. Um, and, um, you know, um, that didn't necessarily happen. And I still got extremely lucky and had right place, right time moments and was able to find myself, uh, sitting in, uh, the, the, the commentary booth and in head TO calls and tournament organizer calls. Um, so what do I want to do in November of 2021? I put out, uh, my only, uh, document. And the document was interviews with Kbot, uh, the Moo, and a bunch of other people who worked on stuff behind the scenes. Basically saying like, hey, how do we make sure that there were resources for the entire community? Um, and um, how do we make sure that there is an, e a, 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 if not streamlined, but a clear way, a clear uh, group of resources to help new stream producers get going, uh, Kbot mentioned at the time about how the same thing was true for commentary. How do we make sure that there are clear resources for commentators to keep moving? Um, and, um, you know, generally, like, um, how do we make sure that, that people can get started? And I, at the time, I was talking a lot about stream production, uh, but the issue also exists for tournament organizing because, you know, there's no clear way in. Um, and my solution at the time in my thread was, hey, we need to make a community server for designers. Uh, and now it's been a year and a half and that hasn't happened. Um, but it still is very true. And, and we've seen this happen before on the player side where uh, people have seen this as an issue. You know, how do we um, get players to have resources to grow at a low level into mid level? How do we connect people who want to coach with players who want to play and get better? Um, and all of those servers have kind of existed and been really popular for a couple days and then slowly faded into nothingness. Um, so there's not, it's difficult to come up with like a clear solution. Um, one thing that I think is very true and, and I know Popgun and Kbot have both volunteered themselves for is like, shoot us a DM and we'll do our best to kind of like walk you through um, what needs to get better and, and, and how we got to where we are and what we know and tips and tricks. Um, but the biggest thing I think is starting as like a community and, and recognizing that like the idea of trying to get lucky and know the right people is not like a clear path forward and not a clear path up. Um, and we both all suggest for tournament organizers, like you should um, just start a tournament and do it. And we also say, hey, um, like it's difficult to get players to play in a tournament that they don't know and is not vetted by an org like MIT or IPL. Um, so I don't have an answer and I wish I did. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to, to 
sit here and be like, I know my, like the IPLs, the, the low ink staff team, at least like there's always room to have more like verification staff because verification is really hard and takes a lot of work. Uh, and like, it always seems to be that there's one person on our team who is carrying a lot of that, that burden and that weight. Um, and, um, if that one person disappears, someone else is stepping up as opposed to a, a bigger team effort. Um, so whatever it is, I think, I think that is something that, that exists very largely and, and on the player side as well. Um, but so here's my advice, how to, how to become head organizer of low ink and rule the world. Um, I think the real answer is like the only thing, which is like, get, get, get yourself out there and, um, try to have your voice known. I know that every org does stuff differently because we're not sharing things. The way low ink verifies is different than the way minnow cup verifies. And we have the same, we say publicly, we have the same skill ceiling and, um, it is feasible for a team to be low ink banned and be eligible for minnow cup. And that kind of just isn't supposed to happen. Um, but there you go. There's your segment. There's how to become a head organizer of low ink and rule the world. Um, we're supposed to go to a weekly recap now. Um, so, as I said, I spill water on myself. It's gonna be music now. You can maybe hear it. I'm gonna level with you guys. I uh, stayed up until 2 a.m. trying to write notes for today. And the one thing I forgot to do was write down who I wanted to talk about in the weekly recap. So while I stall here and pull up tournament results to very quickly walk you through, <laughs> I'm going to uh, tell you in uh, SAC Season 7 Tournament 4, uh, it was won by Frostbite. Rabbit took uh, second place. Uh, Sweet Tooth in third and Grimace Shakers in three. I know we've seen Grimace Shakers kind of all over the place recently uh, showing up in SOSs. So that's a good result. And it's good to see teams like Grimace Shakers showing up and, uh, you know, not just ending up in pickup... Um, Purgatory. Uh, Silver Bracket there was won by uh, La 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 La, who, you know, well, back to pickups. Uh, Gigi wasn't, uh, but they misspelled their own name? Weston? Uh, taking second, sub power up in third, and October Rift in fourth. Um, you know, I talked about my, my low level experience. Um, sub power up, formerly ITAP, uh, is one of those teams that um, I have suffered through uh you know low level uh hell with so um it's always nice i always love it when i get to see names that i recognize i'm like ah i know those guys um i'm gonna keep stalling here because we have swim or sink results to go through here swim or sink 116 was um won by centopia uh grimace shakers took second um though i guess this was two weeks ago because popgun talked about that result uh, because I remember he mentioned that it was really late at night for them. And it is. There was no Swimmer Sync this weekend uh, because it was the last week of the month uh, of July. Um, that's kind of all the big events that happened. There was a Megalodon. I saw the Megalodon result and I wrote it down somewhere. But I don't have it now. So that's uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure it was won by a team. Uh, and I'm sure it was really competitive. Um, and this is why I'm not the typical host of the podcast. Uh, and we have, um, another man to do that. Red Sun won! I knew that. Ah. You know, we're 17 minutes into this episode, and that's two segments down. So what that's supposed to mean is that this last segment lasts forever. Um, and I promise it can. So, here you go. Divs are fake goalposts with fake math. I put out a tweet this week, uh, and I can read you that tweet. That tweet said, <clears throat> here's a challenge for the entire community. Without using Ludi divs, try to articulate the line between low level and mid level. It's an extremely needed exercise. Even if we want to move to a centralized rank system, such as Sendows, we still need to design where that line lives. To do that, you need to look at commonalities between teams in each rank or division, and you do that based on results. So what separates a low ink team 
from a mid-level team. What separates a low ink team from a mid-level team? Now, I will say um, I was a little bit inconsistent in my use of language in this tweet. I um, used both the terms low ink and low level, a low ink eligible and low level. I used mid-level to mean the same thing as low ink banned. Uh, and I think it's fairly safe to say most of the community sees that as true. Um, though uh, I got a lot of people who made sure I knew that um, a low ink ban was not necessarily mid-level and they have a point and we'll get there. Um, I got a lot of responses to this tweet. Uh, in fact, that wasn't the planned um, podcast episode topic today. Uh, and then Popgun kind of told me it should be. So now it is. Um, I got three main responses to that tweet. Three big ones. Um, I'm going to call them the good answer, the boring answer, and the edgy answer. The good answer, consistency in results and placements, is how you determine that line. How do you tell who's mid-level and who's not? Well, it's who can win more. And it's like, yeah, you're right. Um, but please, uh, the whole point of this exercise was to tell me what those results are. Um, and obviously, you need something a little more um, concrete than saying you just win a bunch. Um, so we'll come back to that because that's the good answer. The other ones are boring and edgy. The boring answer, uh, a low ink ban is mid-level and thus low ink staff are the arbiters of who's mid-level or not. Um, and then there were, you know, the other group of people saying that that couldn't be true uh, because a low ink ban is only a ban from low ink. Uh, and here's what I'll say to that. And we'll also expand on this in a minute. Um, a low ink ban is a ban from low ink. Uh, it's also a ban from launch point because launch point um, doesn't allow anyone who's, I believe, top three in alpha. Uh, at least that's what one thing I read said. It definitely, if you're banned low ink, you're banned launch point. Um, or rather, if you win low ink, you're banned, if you get banned that way. Um, you know, also, I'm sure Minnow Cup looks at low ink results and, and if you are low ink banned. Um, and sort of the entire low level scene looks at low ink. There's only two tournaments in the skill range that is low ink. It's low ink and Minnow Cup. Uh, Little Squid League and From the Ink Up, both great low level events. Uh, but they are themselves a subset of the greater low ink pool. And what that means is that you graduate LSL or from the ink up to little squid or to low ink. So, okay, a low ink ban is a ban from the entire low level community, but it doesn't mean you're good enough to be mid level. So now some people are saying there's the high low level thing. And Popgun loves to make fun of this. There's high low, mid level, and mid high low level. and and uh, a million different skill divisions because we as humans need to compare ourselves to the rest of the Splatoon scene and all that. Um, and we'll come back to this in a moment. But there's the edgelords. And I got a lot of people asking me why should I care or why does it matter? Um, and I get it because I, subs I, I kind of felt that way for a very long time. Um, why does it matter if you're Div 4 or Div 3, just play the game and win. And you're right. But there's there's one big fallacy to that, I think, uh, and then that kind of bleeds into the rest of it, is like this this concept of, of a lot of low-level players, their dream is not to, you know, get showcased in Splat World Cup or be in the Ink TV Resurgence League. The goal is to play a tournament every month and do well and, you know, maybe one day you'll win low ink and you'll figure out where you go from there. And because of that, if you get to alpha bracket and your only tournament experience is low ink and that's the only thing you want to play, you don't want to put in 40 hours a week like I did at one point, it's like, okay, you're never going to graduate out of low ink. You're stuck in alpha bracket forever. Um, and so why does it matter? Well, it matters because at some point... Um, it becomes someone's job to say, you know what, you're too good for my tournament. Um, and when you're stuck verifying, you know, 240 teams a month, um, 
your goal is to draw a line somewhere. And your goal is to say, hey, you know what? We see what you're doing. We see you, you know, tearing it up in proving grounds. Um, get out of my tournament. You're not low rank eligible anymore. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to draw that line. Um, Ludi draws a bunch of lines. Um, and this was a, a conversation I had as part of this tweet was like, Ludi draws uh, 13 or 14 lines, I suppose, with Div X. Uh, and then um, the bottom group of those are bigger. They're double the size. Um, is that a, a quantifier of skill? No, it's another verification team, but um, it's, it's what we use so far. Um, Sendu is going to be drawing a line. Um, where even though you queue and you play and it's ELO based and you'll, it'll be mathematically the right skill level, um, at some point you're saying that someone in one division in, you know, gold or whatever they're called is going to be low level and platinum will be top level and, you know, we're going to give them our own names and low ink might become stone or whatever it is, iron eligible only, iron and below, um, but that's drawing a line. And we might look at iron and say, you know what? The bottom half of iron is low ink and the top half is too good. Um, so ultimately, again, we end up drawing the line. Um, the third kind of idea, and this is what I've sort of always liked the concept of, the idea of, um, is a non-centralized ELO system. Um, and, and, and that hails from the chess world. Um, there is a governing body called FIDE. Um, which I would tell you what it stands for, uh, but it's, I think Italian and I don't know Italian, but effectively what FIDE does is when you make a tournament, you go knock on FIDE's door and you say, Hey FIDE, um, all these really, really, really good players are going to be playing in my tournament. Um, and if I agree to follow, you know, your rules and, and, and govern it a certain way and make sure I'm not a bad tournament organizer, um, I'm going to submit all these wins and you're going to calculate their ELO, um, and um, from there, you know, um, you have an ELO system. And, and that's cool because it's decentralized and it allows us to still run tournaments, still have flexibility uh, in um, our um, tournaments and how they're run and formats and such. Um, so there, there you go. Those are the three big kind of schools of thought for how can you draw that line and how can you decide um, what... Uh, um, low level is versus mid level or low ink band or not or low ink eligible. Um, but the, the, the very important thing here is we still have to draw a line. Uh, low ink verification, I, I know Popkin has talked about this on the podcast before, is we look at every single team, we make sure every player um, should be eligible and doesn't have results that are too good. We don't look at placements, we look at results. So if you've beaten a team that has gotten a placement, we, we acknowledge that, we say that, okay, the team you beat has one great white bracket, that's a really big win. Um, if we need to, we investigate further. We say, okay, what was their roster at the time? Was um, it the same players? Were they having a bad day? Were there internet issues? Um, and now you open a whole can of worms is at, at like, at what point do you devalidate a win because it's not actually the team that has the good result. Um, and it becomes a spiral of like, where do you decide and how do you decide what, what is a valid result? But we look at results, not placements. I'll start there. We take those, we look at every player's results, and then we look at the team as a whole. We say, okay, does the team as a team playing together have results and have placements? And with that, we make an educated guess on what score on day one Swiss we think they're they will get. Do we think they're going to go undefeated or 5-1? Do we think they're going to be 3-3? Three and three? Do we think they're going to be 1-5? and five? Uh, And from there, that's how we seed Swiss brackets. Um, that way, um, highest seed plays lowest seed, and it meets in the middle. Great. Um, with that in mind, um, we end up in a position um, where we are deciding what that line is, what is low level, what is mid level, what is low ink band, not low ink band, low ink eligible, uh, based on results. And it is very often kind of just vibes. If a team or a player looks too good, we send a message in our verification channel and we go, hey, what is everyone's opinion on this person? 
Um, and if you know any of the verification staff or people who have access to that channel are in here, you'll know that I never um, choose to ban a team. I'm like nearly always just like, I don't think so. They're not consistent. There aren't enough results. It doesn't look good enough. Um, and realizing that I said that to all but one team for the last four months, um, I thought to myself, okay, um, what are, what are we doing to, to, to deal with that? What it, we need some kind of hard and fast rule to, um, dictate what, what makes a team ineligible. Um, so that was where the tweet came from. That's where this debate kind of started. Um, like what do you, what does the community see as it? Um, so we started there. Um, I also reached out, I will say, to other tournaments within IPL and said, hey, you, um, I think SOS notably, and I said, hey, SOS, uh, you have overlap with a lot of our players. Where do they typically rank? How consistent is rankings in your event? What can we use off of that? Um, so I'm going to publicly kind of say my suggestion here. Um, and uh, that's not saying that this is what will happen. Uh, this will be a debate among the entire uh, low ink team, obviously. Um, but the idea goes like this. If we're looking at placements, you can take a team's placements and um, dictate what, how, sorry, not placement, result. You look at a result and you say, how important is this result based on the opponent's um, placement in an event? Um, did they make podium in a hammerhead? Did they do, uh, did they make alpha bracket in super jump? Um, whatever it may be. And start there. Uh, you can look at placements, but it's dangerous because placements change based on who enters an event. Uh, and you can look at things like looty divs, uh, but basically allow as much data as we can verify to be consistent and say, you need to hit a certain number of norms. You need a certain number of these qualifiers, testaments to your skill um, to um, decide if, if you have met, um, you know, the, the, the enough norms that, that we can definitively say, if you played in low ink, you would definitely be top eight alpha. You would have a chance of making it to grand finals and you would have a chance of winning. Um, and that's really scary to do. Uh, because again, the low ink staff team ends up being the arbiters of low ink or, or, or of low level, of mid level. We end up being the gateway because you can self ban yourself. You can say, I'm not going to play in low ink anymore, but that doesn't mean you're ineligible. It just means that you're not playing in low ink anymore. Um, the difference there being, you know, what results are you getting in the tournaments that are not low ink? Um, I do believe that's the only way to grow as a player is to be playing in other things and to be. Um, you know, measuring yourself up to, um, if you're a low, if you're an LSL team, measuring yourself to alpha teams, if you're an alpha team, measuring yourself to mid-level teams and, and doing that. Um, but regardless, there, there are players who that's not in their, um, purview and, and, and that makes sense. Um, so with send you Q on the horizon, um, there's, there is this idea that, I, that I'm hearing and feeling and, and getting, which is that there will be some sort of magic to having an, an, an official centralized ELO value for what how good your team is and being able to automatically have that in a division um, that, that we will now as verification staff be able to take that and use that. And I hear it. And I like that, but I'm not sold. Because ultimately, you're just making a new goalpost and it's just as arbitrary as it was before. ELO is better because it is based off of results, but we as TOs are already looking at results and we're already measuring that. And if the team that doesn't want to play mid-level teams in low ink 
uh, doesn't want to play mid-level teams. They're going to do everything in their power when they're playing on a centralized website like that to not have to face off against those other teams. And what you end up with is isolated, smaller ELO sections um, where instead of being able to climb the ranks, you just start getting plus zero from opponents over and over again. And if you lose, you end up with negative 30 ELO points because as ELO gets more... Um, as teams end up closer to each other, um, you just end up circling and circling and circling because, you know, every, I think it is fair to say that in low ink, um, you can very easily draw daisy chains of teams that would all beat each other uh, because low level is volatile and uh, a, a low level doesn't necessarily follow the rules that you would expect um, a, an ELO uh, um, format to follow. And that's why I'm really excited for the Little Squid League ladder. I know this one's open. I know it's a test. I'm really excited to see what happens if this is a format that Little Squid League decides to continue with. Because while I, I will concede that um, in, in Little Squid League squ skill brackets, there is a little bit, I think, uh, clearer... Um, teams that are fresher and newer to the scene and maybe teams that have low ink experience and are starting to hit cusp alpha. Uh, and I think you see that because it is a smaller event and it is harder to see in a tournament like low ink with 250 teams. Um, and I will concede that. However, when you have so many teams that one mistake in a game can be punished by just about anyone else because, you know, mistakes are a, a lot bigger. Um, Ladder will be very interesting. Uh, and it is my understanding that Little Squid League is using Ladder to seed a bracket, uh, which would be an idea that Low Ink moves to in, a, in the uh, case of 257 teams. Um, but, um, I mean, it's interesting, to say the least. Um, and I, I, I brought up ELO, and I, 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 chess is something I'm quite familiar with. What you see at the top level is like Magnus Carlsen, who uh, some people believe to be the greatest chess player of all time. Um, he will win 30 games back to back and gain an ELO point, uh, and he'll draw once and he'll like lose seven. And it's like, well, here we are. Uh, so ELO is great, but it has its flaws. And all of that to say that you will not end up with clear divisions that despite the fact that there will be buckets and we will make those buckets based on i'm sure i'm not 100 percent, but i'm assuming based on percentiles um in a standard distribution one bucket will be bigger than another bucket and assuming that uh, skill level in splatoon follows a standard distribution um what we call low ink um as it is now might be closer to the middle of that standard distribution, might be towards the middle of skill level in the scene as a whole. Um, and that's something that I've heard before, um, is this idea that low ink is too big, and a lot of the teams that are in low ink now probably would have been considered mid-level a year ago. Um, and the unfortunate thing is that we can't prove that. We've got no way of looking at low ink now and saying that, that the kinds of results these teams are getting is is different than a year ago because the Splatoon community has grown um, ex uh, exponentially in the last year. Um, and so the other, the other uh, um, part of that is that because we kind of had an influx of players, you might be able to argue that, that more of the, the players in the competitive community end up on the um, lower skill side. So it doesn't end up being a standard distribution, though it might be in the whole of all of Splatoon players in the world. The point is we don't have the stats to back that up. Nintendo does not release them. We don't get to see um, X rank uh, distributions and rank distributions as far as I've ever seen. Um, we get the little pyramid graphic, but that isn't the data we need um, because I think the pyramid doesn't change. I don't think the lines move. There's just like different number of teams because it's percentile based. Uh, I digress. Point is, um, we don't have the data to prove that. And Sendu 
queue and tournament platform won't actually solve that issue. It will just give us different names for different buckets and different ways to base those buckets. From where I stand as a low ink verification member and a head TO of low ink, my instinct is that even if the entire community can migrate and decide on a beautiful, wonderful system and be centralized like that, we will end up in a situation where once again, it is the job of a low ink staff member to decide to take a piece of evidence that is your sendu Q elo or rank and compare it to all of your other results and say, is it enough? because we're in so deep as a community that we are so used to the systems in place. We're so used to basing everything off of Ludi divs and results and you know the, the 18 billion spreadsheets I'm sure exist for verification across all of the orgs in the scene um, that all this will be is another data point and it's not going to solve all of the issues. Thus, a line still needs to be drawn for low ink because it's all arbitrary and nothing matters and the goalposts are fake with fake math. Um, there's one other point I wanna bring up though. Uh, and this spawned from a conversation that I had after that tweet went live. Um, and it was the idea, and I brought this up earlier, but the idea of moving to a centralized ELO system not um, dependent on a tournament platform. Um, and the beauty in that, and this is the one, um, difference to, this is the one situation I foresee where we no longer need to use essential, an ELO system as another data point and instead can use it forever and ever is if we have a world where you can import tournament results from trusted TOs and use every single match you play competitively as a data point. And from there, instead of a human being going through all of the data points, then the math will just work. And then we can finally use real math and look at percentiles and say, hey, maybe low level is the bottom 15. Maybe it's the bottom 30, but at least then you're doing it with something that makes sense because you're doing it from a place where you have this data of every tournament, of every result, uh, and you're building up from there. Um, so there you have it. That's, I think that's all I wanna talk about on this. There's my rant. I know Popgun uh, went on for a while about SendUQ uh, and about a new uh, a centralized system like that. Um, and I get it. Um, and I agree in a lot of places. Uh, and one thing that I, I didn't mention earlier, but I think is very important to mention is that uh, Popkin and I disagree. Um, I don't want to say often, but we definitely agree about calls and decisions and um, should a team be banned or not. And that is what makes a healthy verification and staff team is one where um, different viewpoints are shared and heard. And um, from there, you're taking that and you're... Um, uh, um, making a good call you're, you're raising the arguments making the points um so um there you go there's another example i'm gonna scroll through and do highlighted messages because i didn't do that for the last segment um is being the podcast host the highlight of your career no is there a correct answer to that question um okay i don't see any other highlighted messages really just the one Cool. We need more beef. The team needs more money matches. Just you wait. Um, money matches. I hear you. <laughs> there you go. There's JPEG. I was waiting for JPEG. Okay. I didn't drink any water during that, so I'm not doing a great pop gun impression, but I'm drinking my water now. Um, all righty. Well, I mentioned some tournaments coming up um, uh, earlier today uh, with the uh, tournaments that may be of interest to the casual listener. I hope to see you in some of those low-level events look to be popping off this weekend. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for an announcement on the next Low Inc. since, um, surprise, surprise, we will have one in the month of August. Um, you know, like we've done every month for the last 
too many years. Um, and um, Proving Grounds is this Friday. Uh, and I hear the commentators are really good in that. So you should uh, come uh, and, and show up. Um, if you'd like to be a part of the podcast in any way, feel free to reach out to any of my socials. Uh, those are not the ones on screen. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at BrushStrokesSPL, on Twitch at BrushStrokesSPL, on Discord at BrushStrokes. Um, or you can uh, find PopGun at Twitter, Mr. Underscore PopGun, Discord PopGun, YouTube at 25PopGun, Twitch at PopGun25, Anchor.fm backslash PopGun, TikTok at Mr. Underscore PopGun. Um, but he probably won't respond to you because um, he has a kid now. PopGun Jr. is real. Um, so, you know, now the hardest part of today is figuring out if I know how to raid someone. Um, how do you do this? You do like slash raid and then you like find people in the Splatoon verse. Um, we're gonna head on over to, oh, I don't know anyone who's live. This is so bad. This is so unfortunate. Um, I feel like, I feel like I should know someone. Raid Ninja? Is Ninja live? Is Ninja on? We're gonna raid Zaya. Here we go. Okay. Well, um, as Popgun always says, um, you know, uh, get vaccinated, wear a mask, um, don't be stupid, uh, and um, say nice things on Twitter. Okay. <laughs>